So, I know rejection all too well. All too well. I get rejected from men, I get rejected from jobs, I get rejected from schools, I get rejected from friendships, I get rejected all across the board, family, my dogs. My dogs reject me. She never wants to like hang out. So, you know, I'm so used to it that I have picked up a few things over the last 10 or so years about rejection. My name is Autumn um, and today we're going to be talking about five things to get over rejection. Now rejection is tough. It's a new year now, finally, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to get any more no's. And what people don't tell you is that they say, oh, you know, you'll get 500 no's before you get that one yes, right? But what they don't tell you is Every no that you get just chips away at you, chips away at you. Like, you know, what do you do? Yeah, okay, I got told no, how do I move on? How do I bounce back? Um, so yeah, I'm going to be telling you guys how to do that. So stay tuned. Right there in the middle of things, right there in the middle of things with me. Woo. Right there in the middle of things is you, okay. Tip number one is to know that it's okay to cry about it. Feel all those emotions while you're in the moment. Don't just, oh, whatever, screw it, it's fine. No, it's okay if you were upset about it, if you were really banking on this job opportunity or this you know, relationship opportunity and it doesn't work, cry it out. It's fine. No one's gonna judge you for feeling your raw emotion. My second tip is depending on what it is you're taking, you're, you're doing, take a risk with it. So, um, and you're like, well, how does this have to do with rejection? Well, it's easy to be rejected for something tiny, but if you don't take the initiative to do something massive, take a risk and then you get rejected, it's better to say that you were able to try than to like, oh, I didn't even try. I was too scared to try because I didn't want to get rejected. Um, you know, just try the try the take a risk. You never want to think, well, what if I did this? I have multiple baskets. I know that your mom or aunt or cousin or grandmother has always said, well, baby, you need multiple baskets you put your eggs all in the same basket that's why it failed well you know what it's kind of true you know epic eye roll we don't want the older people to be right but sometimes they are right and putting your eggs in one basket is a big no-no don't mm -mm, mm -mm, don't do that have multiple baskets so for example I'm applying to jobs you know I'm not applying to just one job yeah I want that one job but I'm also doing other things and putting my eggs in other baskets so that if this job says no I have something else to fall back on it's the same in dating like don't just date one person I mean you know us loyal girls it's hard out there for us because I, I, I ain't a player I can't do it but I'm making a note that I don't just exclusively talk to one person if I can help it because you never know this person this guy might you know decide hey you're not the one one day and then all my emotions were in him no put your e put your eggs in different baskets redeposit your energy in other things you redepositing your energy in different things makes it so that if something fails, it's not that big of like a hit, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So number four is to rebuild your self-esteem. So this is after you've already been told no. And I know it hurts. I know it hurts. Being told no is probably like the worst thing ever because it just, it stings, it hurts the pride a little bit. And so after you do this, after you've been told no and you put your soul into it, you think like, well, dang, I'm not good enough. 
I'm not, nobody wants me on this. Nobody wants to date me. Nobody wants me on their job. Nobody wants to give me an opportunity for this new job. So you gotta rebuild your confidence. So this is a part that I struggle with and this part takes the longest to do for me. So what I do is I'll write a list out of all my accomplishments and sometimes I understand that my accomplishments may seem big in other people's eyes and not to me and this is why it takes so long. I have to re I have to reevaluate the value of my accomplishments. And then I realize like, you know what? So they didn't want to date me, they missed out. Or so they didn't want to hire me, their company is is going to miss out on all this greatness that I did X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, you know. So just make a list and rebuild your confidence. You know, take yourself out to dinner after getting told no. And the reason could be like, I made it through being told no. You know, a lot, a lot of people can't make it through being told no. And you just gotta rebuild your confidence that just because this person doesn't want me doesn't mean that anybody doesn't want me. Or just because this company doesn't want me doesn't mean that nobody wants me. You know, you just gotta keep trying and it sucks. So, for example, I um, I tried to be in a sorority in college and I got rejected. And I was like, I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep trying. And then I tried again and I didn't make it. So, it, it really like chipped away at me like, dang, should I even do this? Should I even be a part of this organization? Am I even gonna get like anything out of it? Is it gonna give anything to me? Am I gonna give anything to it? I was hurt, you know? And for a while, I thought, well, they let all these other people in, but not me, so I must not be good enough. Well, it's taken me a while, but you gotta rebuild your self-esteem about it, your confidence about it. Like, you know what? I wasn't meant to be with that specific chapter, chapter for a reason. And then that leads me into number five. Realizing that no does not mean no. Sometimes it means not yet. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Sometimes no doesn't mean no. It means not yet. So let me explain. Let me explain with an example. I applied to be a part of a job um, that I would have been able to teach across seas last year. So the end of 2019, beginning of 2020-ish. And I was so excited. It's all I could talk about. I was, I put all my eggs in one basket and I was like, I'm gonna get this job. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna, my life is gonna change, da 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 da, da. And the first week of January, I got a rejection. And I was like, what? I was so qualified, overqualified even. Um, what do you mean I didn't get the job? I was, I, I am everything that they needed and they didn't, they didn't want me. And I went into like a very serious depression about it. Um, I was super upset. I didn't think that I'd be able to do it or try again. And I was like, I'm not gonna try again. It's a waste of my time. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Maybe there's a reason. And then you wanna know what happened after that? I'ma let you guess. I'ma let you guess, I'll give you some time. Ah, dang, you're right. Coronavirus happened. Yeah, Miss Rona came up in there and said, hold my beer and just destroyed any opportunity I would have or could have had this year but it's okay. And I was so upset and I thought about it. And you know, if you're religious, I'm Christian. So, you know, I'm kind of, kind of Christian. Like I believe in God and I love God, but um, I'm not going to push it down anybody's throat. But if you're religious or if you believe in the universe, sometimes I had to, I was like, why would this happen to me? Like, come on. There's so many people out there who are not deserving of the opportunities that they get. So many people that are not humble. And for me not to get it, I was like, what, what did I do wrong? So I thought about it after coronavirus and why I didn't get the job. And I was like, oh, OK. 
okay, okay. That's why I didn't get the job because it's not my time yet to go. Imagine if I had went. I'm in a foreign country by myself, can barely speak the language, and a virus is out there coming for the asthmatics. I, what, what was I gonna do? You know, so there's a, there's a reason behind the no sometimes. And, and you, you might not be able to see it, but a lot of times it's a valid reason. And it's kind of like uh, the green, the grass isn't green on the other side. How does that, how does it go? Grass isn't as green on the other side. There you go. Mm. Um, but yeah, just realizing that sometimes being told no isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like for example, with the sorority, maybe yeah, it hurt the first time. It even hurt the second time. But maybe no isn't a no. Maybe it's just a not yet. You know, it might be 15, 10 years down the line that I'll finally get in. And that's fine. I'm just going to let it take its course. And if I never get in, that's fine too. Clearly, God and or the universe, whichever one of them is talking first, has said their peace. But going back to my third tip when you have those multiple baskets it shouldn't hurt as much because you've got other opportunities lined up so all my pieces all my tips kind of just interweave together you see what I'm saying so yeah and in the words of the famous and my truly beloved Daughtry it's not over, it's not over. so yes Overcoming rejection can be hard. It takes a really big person to do it, but you got this. We're in a new year. 2020 was crap. I mean, who knows? 2021 might be worse, but let's just go into it knowing how to overcome rejection, knowing how to overcome your fears, knowing how to get yourself in a better mood for what's to come later. So yeah, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you have anything that you re were rejected of recently and you have any tips, then share them. Because I might not have the best tips. I, You know, my tips might be crap compared to your tips, so give me some tips. But yeah, anyway, thank you and have a good day. Bye.